All right, so we just kind of turned on, and this is our group evening session here in Chelan, February the 3rd, 7, 7 o'clock, and uh, if someone shows up for viewing it, you can ask questions live, or if you view it later and you have questions, you can email me from the website, and uh, we can get into discussion that way. So, Welcome. Um, I, I won't be saying your name so that you can have anonymity there. I'll probably be repeating what you say so it can be heard on the video just for, for clarity. And I know that some of us here have experience now um, with using the ICE method, and others, it's the first time using it. So, maybe it'll be good if I take just a moment to explain how it works. Is that be useful? Yes. Okay? And you're a little worried if I explain how it works, maybe it won't work anymore. So that's great. Because it's been making a difference for you, is that right? A big difference. And so you want to say just a little bit about that so um, maybe the others can hear kind of what 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 difference it makes for you. Well, one thing, I, I found that if I don't make time to do it, it doesn't do much for me at all. I have to do it fairly regularly. Okay, so you kind of you need to be involved in doing it regularly. Yes. Okay. But um, I have been able to stop doing some of the compulsive things that I was doing. I'm not eating sweets anymore. Okay. Um, I don't have a lot of the pain from my fibromyalgia that I used to have. So stop eating sweets. Fibromyalgia pain is lower. Other compulsive behaviors are diminished. Okay. And my serenity is enhanced. Serenity is up. Okay. I can't tell it today. I had a wild day today. But okay. Great. I had a wild day today. So it's perfect that we're here together. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anything else in terms of difference? So that's kind of really sort of what where you're noticing it. Yeah, I think that, that you know I have reconditioned some memories. That's not the right word. Some memories. Um, and, you know, that, that were causing me distress, and I've done that work. Um, and I don't know that I really have, you know, it was around my ex husband and around my father. And okay. that stuff cleared up really nicely and stopped dragging down my life. Great. So you've reconsolidated, that's the word, some of those memories from the past that were actually impacting. Your present, yeah. yeah, and that I think is just one of the most <clears throat> amazing and remarkable things of um, this thing that's called memory reconsolidation, and that's what the ICE method is based around. Um, ICE stands for identify something, move into a calm state, a calm emotional state, because when you identify it, there's some emotional charge to it. You know, some emotion, anger, fear, sadness, like you had a hectic day today, so there would have been some emotion attached to that. Otherwise, it would have been completely calm. Then we use a simple exercise to move over to the calm state. And what happens when we do that, whatever we're observing, whatever emotion we're feeling, whether it's calm or agitated, we actually, from that emotion, we create the chemistry and that stores in the synapses of our brain. So between brain cells, they're connected by these little wires, and the connection point is called the synapse. And so from Candace Pert's molecules of emotion and all of her research, it's like if we have an emotion, it actually shows up as a chemistry in our brain. And then from Bruce Lipton's biology of belief, and also Candace Pert's molecules of emotion, Whatever that molecule is in our brain, that actually is providing the instructions for the cells of our body and what they do. So there is this connection between our mind and our body. And the, the amazing thing about memory reconsolidation was the discovery, and that's what you're talking about, your experience of having gone back and reconsolidated some old memories. The amazing thing is that we whenever we pay attention to an old memory, it's actually activated for, they discovered, for about four hours. So that chemistry that got stored in there, let's say it was a car accident, and the emotion was fear, 
at the time from 20 years ago. That emotion actually got stored in there. It's part of what binds the memories together. When you go back and think about that, you feel the fear, whatever the emotion was at the time. And then for four hours, this is the piece that's new. What they know now is that for those four hours, that memory has to reconsolidate. It takes it four hours for that memory to settle down again. So if you can replace that chemistry during those four hours, you'll be able to go back to old memories and they'll be gone. You've had that was your experience, is that correct? You know, you've had some experiences with that, and you also have had some experiences with that for widely differing things. Why does it work for widely differing things? It's because of the science and the chemistry of what's happened, so you don't need to be scared it won't work anymore. <laughs> okay? So this is the discovery. It's called memory reconsolidation. It's discovered in the year 2000. It's mostly in the laboratory at this point. But when I read it, I was already doing something called EFT, the Emotional Freedom Technique, which is a tapping procedure on acupuncture points. And people were having amazing results with it. It's, it's well known. Much more than a million people know how to do tapping. And people have amazing results with it. And I was like, well, how can this happen? You know, the things that have been upsetting to people for decades, they're not upsetting. And then when I started to read and all the research and stuff, I finally came upon this thing called memory reconsolidation. And I'm pretty sure, well, actually highly confident, that that's what's happening when you don't have that upset anymore over those old issues. Okay? So tonight, we'll um, just use that as a basic introduction to the process. And now we're going to do the process. But do you have questions at this point about it? Any questions? You don't have to. It's fun. Okay. So, what I'm going to invite you to do is this process called identify, calm, and exchange. And you now have a lot of familiarity with that. You haven't tried it before. You guys have used it a lot. So, it's a very gentle process. And I actually don't have to hear what's going on. So, this isn't like a, a therapy thing where you need to bear your soul and then we have to figure it out and then figure out another solution, okay? Because as soon as you identify the issue for yourself, it's active. Chemically, a protein, a, a short protein molecule called a peptide in your brain now basically gave you back the emotion and it's going to take it four, about four hours to settle back down. So you can imagine, like, you know, it's something you stir up, it's all frothy, and then four hours later it's all calmed down and settled back. Now that's what normally happens for us. But in this process, before it settles down, we're going to replace it with a different molecule. And it's amazing that we now actually know that that's what's happening in the brain. When we didn't know it, then typically things would settle back down in the same way. And so that those issues that were upsetting you have upset you for all of these years and they never changed, correct? Mm -hmm. And now they change. Why? Because the molecule that was involved in storing that memory is now different because of this process, the ice method that we use. So it's it's amazing brain science that they've discovered, but it's a wonderfully simple process. So I'm going to invite each of us now just to take a moment and identify something in our life that's not calm. You said you had a great day today that wasn't calm, so you have probably seven things right there, right? It could be either something from today, or it could be something from a long time ago, a week ago, childhood, whatever. And I'm not going to need to hear about it. If you want to share it later, that's fine. Because it's kind of nice to hear, you know, just in terms of learning what's going on. But there's no need for that. Okay? So <clears throat> I'm going to take a moment here and identify something for myself as well. And I invite you to do that too.
It's kind of amazing if we were in a room with a hundred people, there'd be a hundred people we could find something in our lives that wasn't calm. That's pretty much just the nature of what it means to walk through life. And it's part of why this is such an amazing thing. Is with this process you can actually walk through much of life with much more calm. Okay? So what we did in identifying that issue or memory or experience in your life is we actually activated some chemistry in your brain. Okay? We're going to go a little bit more about activating it, but before we do that I'm going to ask does anybody have like a really super highly charged memory that's really upsetting you? Because if you do, then it's not a problem, we just want to be a little more gentle with it. Okay? Kind of a big supercharge. Well, you would like feel it in your body and it's hard to even concentrate. Um, people who have like something like post traumatic stress, okay? Oh. When when that event gets triggered, then I, I'll show you that method later, maybe tonight. But there's a way to work with that. But what we want to do then is just barely touch that. It's already active. We don't need to like turn it into a volcano. Okay, so that was what I'm asking. Are you still able to be present and focus? Okay. Okay. So um, it's just important because we want to stay present with this process. <laughs> and people who have really, really highly charged things can, it's called dissociation. And they can be so charged that we can't even pay attention anymore. And I wouldn't want that to happen because then we couldn't do this process that would calm it down. There's the whole connection of things, so that there's the point that's making you stress, mm -hmm. and then there's all those things behind you right. and around that yeah. thing that's making you stress. Which are big, what it sounds like, potentially. Right. Yeah. Okay. And because I'm kind of analytical about stuff. Okay. All right. Well, you're going to like this process because you can do it without getting analytical, or you can analyze it as it's like. It's actually incredible that the emotions are stored in our brain in this manner and we have access to making a difference in a way that's completely scientifically understandable. But you don't have to know the science to have it work. Okay, so what we're going to do in this identifying part, we have something. I want you to choose which emotion it feels most like. And it's just identifying it because we want those synapses to be activated, okay? And there's just a few different ways to do this. So, would it be most like anger, fear, or sadness for you? Okay. Got an emotion? A question? Sadness for me. Sadness for you? Okay. You can say what the emotion is if you want, or you can keep it silent, whichever. If, so, pay attention to the issue, okay? And if you feel more than one emotion, then just identify those. Okay. So I'm not limiting you to one. Typically, one will show up first, and then when you do this process, well, like if it was a fear thing, that's the thing you're going to fear be, or feel because that's the most pressing one. But after the fear goes away, it's like, I'm actually really angry about that thing that happened, you know, and that might show up next. But if you have more than one at the current moment, that's fine. Okay. Maybe I can identify the one that I'm going to let go of. Yeah, or just go ahead and just identify the ones that are present, the one you want to let go. What we're doing right now, analytically, is these memories that are bound together in our mind and have been for many, many years since whenever they occurred, we're actually, by paying attention to them, the thing that glues them together, this peptide molecule <clears throat> right at the synapse, is now sort of being jiggled loose. And for the next four hours, it's going to spend time settling back into place. But during those four hours, because we know it now, we can actually put something different in. A different molecule, peptide string of amino acids, I know you know this from your profession, that different string of amino acids actually carries different information emotionally. Our, our response to it is emotionally different than another molecule. Kind of crazy, but it, it's true. <laughs> they, they actually know this, this stuff. Now. Okay, so there's an emotion. 
you all, you all chose something, some issue. Now just pay attention in your body and see if you feel it somewhere. And sometimes you'll feel your stomach gurgle or your shoulders will tighten up or something. So just pay attention and see if you notice it as a physical sensation. Okay. So did you were you able to feel it somewhere in your body? Okay. okay. Yeah. Are you open saying like what where do you feel it? Um, my emotion is fear and I always feel fear, right? Right yeah. in your chest. Yeah. yeah. And as you do this, you'll notice that, that often like that same emotion as you say will show up in a similar place in the body. And you start to get a little more sensitivity to this process. And it's like, oh, I'm getting what's going on in my body when I feel an emotion about a memory. It's pretty amazing sort of how much more awareness you get about the connection between events and emotions and the body, which is part of why your fibromyalgia pain is much less now. Yeah. Did you feel anything? Sensations anymore? Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is an emotion purely out of consciousness, and yet it shows up as a molecular instruction from the peptide in the brain, the peptides that instruct cellular function. So we're act actually activating stored peptides in the body as well. Okay, were you able to feel something? Mm -hmm. Skin. Mm -hmm. Okay. More like tingly or? Tingly. Okay. Yeah. And the eyes, one of our massages behind the head. Behind the eyes. We just did the first part of the ice process. It's identifying what the issue is in three ways. The issue or the experience, the emotion of it, usually anger, fear, sadness, some combination of those perhaps, and the location in the body. You may or may not have all of those, but you just check those and see what shows up. Sometimes, oh, I don't feel anything in my body, or um, I don't really tie an experience to this, but I just feel really angry right now. Well, then you just can ice that, okay? But those three things you check for, because those are the places that synapses are stored, or synapses in our body, places in our body are storing peptides. So now what we're going to do is move our conscious attention into a different place. And when we do that, we will actually change the chemistry in our mind and our body. And to do that, we're going to do something very simple, which is just to observe this point there. So I'm going to invite you to observe this point. If you want to choose a different point, you can. Um, for you, this is probably simple. I just want something simple to observe. And if you just observe that single point with your conscious mind, then with your conscious mind, you're actually not doing very much right now. And you see how you're getting separation from the issue that you were just paying attention to. Before, we were consciously focusing on whatever the issue was, and now we're building some separation from it. And there's many ways to do that. This step is somewhat like a meditative process. There's a lot of ways to do this. I use this because it almost always works for everybody. And just observe that point. If it's a highly charged issue, your mind might drift off that point. No problem. As soon as you notice it, just observe it. You don't have to do a lot of work in this. Just observe the point. You may feel a subtle relaxing in your body beginning because what you're doing is observing something simple instead of the issue that you felt in your body a moment before. Next, I'm going to invite you to shift your attention either to this corner up here or some other point. If you're doing it for the first time, choose that point right there and observe that in the same manner. Nothing hard about this, just observe that. Normally, when we identify an issue, we put our attention on the issue. 
and we try to figure it out, and all those peptides are charged, and we're feeling them, and we just sort of get worked up about the issue. We identify them, and now we're letting them be. We're observing this second point. And when we do that, the body is responding always to the mind. If we're working on the issue, the body is, the mind's working on the issue, the body is saying, okay, what do we need to do about it? Fight, flight, response about whatever the issue is. But when we observe a single point, because it's very simple to do, then we start creating a simple chemistry in our mind, it gives a simple chemistry to our body, and our body begins to relax. And next, I'm going to invite you to observe the empty space that's between these two points. And there's a wall in back of it between any two points, trees outside, headlights in a car. You can imagine that there's a space that has nothing in it. And even if you're analytical, you can imagine mathematically that there's a space that has nothing in it. And I'm just inviting you to observe that imaginary space. Because when you are observing nothing with your mind, you're doing a really amazing thing, which is to observe that in my external world, in this moment, there's nothing that needs a response from me. Okay? You're just observing that, not the big issue that you just identified, but the space with nothing in it which means there's nothing that my body needs to respond to right now. It's like my mind has got it covered. My mind has seen that it's safe out there. There's nothing that needs my attention. And when that happens, over a thousand chemical reactions change in your body. You go from being the body being tuned to what's going in the outside world. How can I protect you from this? To... There's nothing out there that my body needs my attention for. And so the body moves immediately and automatically into rest and restoration. That's why this feels so good. That's a physically very different state. The cell, actually the, the membrane of the cell, when it's in fight-flight mode, actually sort of closes off because it's in protection mode. So it's not metabolizing food, it's not taking in energy, it's not getting rid of waste, it's not repairing the DNA strand. It's not communicating with other cells. Why? Because all it wants to do is help you survive the next immediate threat. And even if the threat is something that you are paying attention to from 50 years ago, if you're paying attention to that right now, your body is responding saying, what can we do to help? When you observe a space that has nothing in it, it's a simple little trick, but you with your mind are telling your body there's nothing out there that it needs to put its energy in. In rest and restoration mode, you can, the cell membrane actually opens more so that you can better bring in food, get rid of waste. The DNA strand gets sort of worn down a little bit when we're always in fight flight mode. In growth mode, it starts to repair itself. The cells can communicate with each other. And whatever chemistry, whatever medicine that the body is capable of making for your healing, it's doing that as soon as you enter rest and restoration. This is an enormously helpful place to be in. And the nice thing is, it also feels good. Okay? So, we're going to, in and of itself, if that was all we did, move into a calm state, that would be great. Okay? And it's very much like a meditative practice, and it's why meditative practices are good for us. You know, that our body is in a more healing state when we're in there. Okay? But this is the thing with memory reconsolidation. This is the piece that I think is such an additional benefit. Because we, most everybody has things from years ago that when we think about them, they're agitated. You know, you just identified something that had an emotion on it, and you said it goes like this and this and this. Okay? 
So what we do is we use this chemistry now. First we went and we bubbled that up. Now it has four hours to play with it. Okay. Then we went and got that chemistry. And now we're going to bring it back and replace it. And all I want you to do is to take and observe now the specific thing that was an upset for you, that wasn't common. So if the emotion was fear, observe the emotion of fear again and see if it's the same or different. If you had a couple of emotions, just check them. Check the location in your body. You said that it was in your chest. And when you check there, does it feel the same or different? Yeah. Is it calmed down? Okay. Is there any not is there any tight part in your body then from that in this area? Okay, so it calmed down. You brought that chemistry into your body and your body relaxed. Mm -hmm. It went from being in fight or flight mode, how am I going to protect you, to there's no need for protection. And the body relaxes. So if you check the physical location in your body when you felt it, does it feel the same or different for you? Well, I felt like my response to thinking about the memory of the issue was different. Okay. And how would you describe that? That it's different is what you said. Um, I didn't tie as many emotions to it. Okay. People will sometimes say, instead of being tied right into it so much, <clears throat> it's begun to feel a little bit more like I'm watching a movie. Or I'm reading a book about it. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. And that is because when the original chemistry got stored in your brain, and you went back to it, you felt that original chemistry. As if you were right there. <clears throat> and your body had an as if I was right there response which was probably a tight chest at the time when it happened. Now, when you activate those for four hours, if you don't do anything, they're going to settle back in the exact same way in a year from now, it'll be the same, which is the way life typically goes. Because if this was a many years past memory, nothing's ever changed it. You go and get some different chemistry after you activate it, and you bring it back and put it in, and whatever you observe specifically will now be this new thing for the rest of your life. Unless you go in and consciously change it out again. This was a conscious process of changing it out. And that's remarkable. So people who have had issues that stress them, such as their, their ability to function is impaired. Okay, I've worked with quite a few people. If you use this process for those issues and they leave calm, they're going to feel calm about those from now on. Now there can be many layers. Something else can show up that has an upset attached to it. Then you do the same process. That would be a different set of brain cells with different synapses that store that chemistry. When you activate something, you only activate the thing you pay attention to, which is a good thing. You know, because otherwise it'd be like you did this and everything in your life all of a sudden will just be that mush feeling. Right? That that doesn't even make any sense, right? That you could go in five minutes and do a complete emotional dump on your with your life. The way it works, which is actually wonderful, is that the thing that comes up, that specific thing in your brain, the way it got put in your brain chemically is now available for action. And this is a simple way to take action, a very simple way. So for yourself, um, as you check on it, has it shifted for you? You yeah, feel more, feel more at peace. Okay. You may be more aware of my breathing, just relax and and I know you use like meditation specifically and breathing techniques. And those are a way to experience the calm state. Okay? So all that's added here on the front end and the back of it is identifying a specific issue, moving into a calm state, and then exchanging the chemistry. 
And I know you have told me that you have used many other practices as well. All those practices for calm and serenity, if you just add the I and the E on the front and the back, they will also function to bring calm to issues that have maybe had years of upset to them. Okay? So you had an emotion of sadness, you said. Did you check in on it? Okay. Often what you'll notice is, and so never like looking for to make up an answer. Okay. Often what you'll notice is that, okay, it feels more like a movie or more distant, but instead of like being a perfect calm and serenity, something else is there now. So it's like peeling the layer of an onion, you know, that first thing was the thing you were paying attention to. And so that was a thing that actually now is calm. But for instance, sometimes it's like, oh, I have this fear of doing this, or I have this fear because someone did something to me. And when that gets reconsolidated, then it's like, I'm actually really angry that that person did that to me. It's a different emotion. That's different molecules stored in the brain. And so now you can feel that in you, and then you can do this process. Okay? I'm not done with this process for myself, even though it's a couple of years now that I've been doing it. Still, things will show up because there's 200 billion neurons in our brain. There's a lifetime full of experience in there. But I picture it like this circle of calm. You know? So you've tried it before. For you, this was your first experience of trying this. Okay? And when it starts, your circle of calm is right here. But then when you come back and you do the exchange on whatever it was you were paying attention to, your circle of calm now includes that item. If you check back on it, is it calm or just different? Might not be completely calm yet. No, because there's so many other emotions attached to the same. Okay. Event. Okay. You know, it really reminds me of the tapping. Yes. It's the same principle. It is. And the thing with tapping was it's explained as in terms of acupuncture and energy and and uh what I found was, as I, as I read through it and came upon this thing called memory reconsolidation, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's what's happening in the brain when it works. That transformation takes place. That explains why EFT works. Because there are times when you use EFT and it really works great. And there's other times you can use EFT and you don't get the same results. And it's like, well, why is that? Why are some things more difficult than some things? Well, if you understand it in these terms, it's like, okay, we simply didn't activate and exchange a synapse that is somehow affecting this issue. And so if you have that picture in your mind as you address these things, whether it's with EFT or this method or another method, then it's like, oh. I guess that synapse replaced, and I know that when it replaced, there's not any real magic to it. It's replaced now. The only way to change that again is to consciously go through a process. And if it didn't replace, it's like, okay, let's just pay some more attention. It's an emotionally stored molecule that we're looking for. What's the issue? What's the emotion? Where do I feel it in my body? How that exchange. So we'll do that now. You said your things have kind of become calm, and, and for you there's a lot of other layers. So for you, I'm going to invite you to take the next layer that showed up, the next piece that was attached. For you, you can either just, if there's something else there that you can feel, it's like, oh, I've got that one, but there's this, go ahead and identify that, or just take a completely different issue. Either way. Okay, but for you, I'm going to invite you to like, oh, there's so many pieces to this, okay? Don't dig, just take the next piece that shows up. Got it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not hard sometimes, is it? <laughs> and the emotion is anger, fear, sadness. Okay, so a sadness. 
it's a disappointment would be a variation of the sadness or or a variation of anger. Is it anger? No. More like a sadness. Closer to that. Yes, if you want to simplify it. I do like to simplify it because people will say a word which is often the nicer word for an angry. <laughs> you know. Um or um yeah, so there may there are nuances for sure. At this point, it's fine because you've got one that's clear for you. Yeah. Um, I use anger, fear, and sadness because it's an easy way to do our own inventory. And sometimes our own things aren't so easy to pay attention to. And also, it's like, hmm, is it one of those? Instead of like, I'm oh, just mildly annoying to me, which is sometimes sort of a nice way to say, I'm oh, really testing it. Feel it right. Yeah, or whatever. Well, with my analytical mind, uh -huh. I decided that the anger was more like betrayal. Okay. And so I focused on that Got emotion. It. And then. You know, disappointment? Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Check your body. See, pay attention to the feeling of betrayal. It's the emotional feeling in that. So the analysis is okay, but if the analysis takes you away from the emotional feeling, then we don't have anything to work with to replace. You're not replacing one analysis for another. <laughs> because that doesn't actually change out peptides. Right? Oh, Many times I'm not when, replacing the what I call betrayal. I'm mm -hmm. not taking it out and putting in. Yes, you are. The emotion. I'm, but I'm not putting in another. The emotion of betrayal. Yeah. But the analysis of it. Okay, so sometimes you can go and you can get all this insight about stuff. And it's really energizing because now I have all this insight about it. But you're still, you, all you have is insight about the battle that you're playing because it's still there. Right. What we're doing in this process by paying attention to the emotion of it, the analysis is fine, but it's actually not the solution. Okay? The solution here in terms of becoming calm so that it no longer affects our body and mind is the replacement of emotional peptides. So I just want you to know that. Yeah, and it makes sense because mm -hmm. I've been trying to tell myself to this is not a past thing, it's a relatively current thing. Okay. And I've been trying to tell myself to be more zen about it yeah. and just let it go. Yeah. Okay. Which which I mean you'll get this from your analytical work. Okay. The way the way the brain works. Typically, what we've understand is you build new pathways around it. Okay, so there's this roadblock. There's this thing that's upsetting me, right? But I should be more Zen about it. Well, if you keep focusing on the Zen thing and all that, you're actually going to start building new brain real estate that helps you to actually be more Zen. The first time something explodes, it's like boom, you know, and then it happens three times. It's like, that's not working. I'm going to get more Zen. Well, then you start really working to become more Zen. That's building a new habit around the thing that's still explosive. We're actually going to go in right now and say, okay, what's the emotion in the well, betrayal? Now I hear disappointment, okay? And we're going to replace the chemistry in there such that it's no longer a roadblock, it no longer charges us. And if it's around a particular person, then eventually we'll be able to, in your imagination, be in front of a particular person or situation or whatever the thing is, and be calm. Whereas otherwise, it's like, okay, all those things are charged, but I choose to do the Zen thing, which takes energy to go around because those other emotions are still there. Okay, so disappointment. Check the body. Where do you feel? Well, originally, when I started talking about disappointment, I felt it in the shoulders, so I didn't see that betrayal came out okay, here. Great. Okay. And so this is magic in the sense that it actually takes care of things. But it's not magic. It's really a very mechanical process in terms of what we do. And all we do is pay attention to what's showing up and then use this process. So you just identified an emotion, a location in the body, and an experience in your mind that we don't need to hear about. Does everybody else have something to... You had plenty from the day you said to work with? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Observe a single point. 
with your conscious, or another point or whatever, with your conscious attention now, you are actually moving your attention outside of the issue that you just identified. And whatever your conscious mind pays attention to, you create a corresponding chemistry. Now, probably nobody has ever said when you're facing an issue, I just want you to look at the end of a, a curtain rock. But you're actually chemically doing something very important when you do that. With your conscious attention, you're getting a separation from the issue, which allows you to begin creating a different chemistry that's going to make your body feel better, and we're going to use. Notice that if this is your first time doing this, it's simpler. The next time we're on actually have your attention put on a point. The more you do this, the simpler it gets because you do this more. So now shift your attention up to the second point up here. Again, conscious mind, we are making the choice to use our conscious mind in a certain way in the presence of something that's upsetting us. And if you want this for your life, then this is what there is to do, is to learn to choose this as the process of dealing with upsets, as opposed to whatever technique we've had before. From this second point, now I'm going to invite you to observe up here to a space that has nothing in it. Behind it is the wall. If you're outside, behind it's going to be a house or whatever. But between any two points, you observe this space that has nothing in it. It's an empty space. And when you observe a space that has nothing in it, you are observing that there is a space. Because it has nothing in it, there's nothing to react to. And when you observe that there's nothing in your outside world that you need to react to, then over a thousand different chemical reactions take place in your body almost instantly. As you shift from your body reacting to whatever was on your mind, to now moving into a state of rest and restoration. Your fight or flight response just turned off. Just enjoy being in this space. It's a very wonderful feeling. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this space later. But what we want to do is we want to use the chemistry that we're creating it on by consciously observing that space. Okay, so it's very good for our body in the present moment. And now I'm going to invite you to simply observe back and exchange that back. So because you told me what you had, you said it was a, you had a feeling of disappointment. So now observe back on that feeling of that emotion and observe if it feels the same or different as you observe the emotion of disappointment. Check it and see what shows up now. I'm not saying it'll be completely calm. We're going to check for what shows up. Because you are bringing that chemistry into your mind and whatever synapses have been activated are being replaced with that. And when they all get replaced, then we feel calm about whatever the issue is. But in that process, okay, maybe I replace these. Now this piece shows up. Oh, that person wears a yellow shirt every day and I'm really upset by the color yellow. You know, something that would have or make it step up, but it would have an emotional piece attached to it. Well, then you reconsolidate that. Okay? So go ahead and check that emotion and see does it feel the same or different? What does it mean? Peaceful. A little more peaceful, okay. Um, you said it was in your shoulder. Check your shoulder. Check here. Okay. Okay. Here's not good, just better. Yeah, it's pretty much. It's relaxed again? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because if it's not, then we just pay attention to that. It's like, oh, okay, well, there's something else there. And we just play the game. It's like, after a while, it's like, oh, this is a really cool game. My body is giving me signals. Okay, there are times when I'll do this and I can feel in my head different parts of my head that, like, that part, I can feel it right now. 
it would be a sharp pain, sometimes it's behind my eyes, and I, I literally just pay attention to that. I'm dealing with some issue, I'm actually feeling that. My understanding is, just like it would be another body part, is synapses have stored peptides that I'm, I'm getting a sensation from. And other times it's chest or whatever, stomach. Pay attention to the emotions, ice. And when I finish a session of that, it'll, it'll like be going around to different places in my head. At the end of it, my head relaxed again. So it's a very, very cool process when you when you take it on as a game. I mean, it, it far exceeds Monopoly for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, so you check back on the emotion. You check on the location in the body. And now observe the, the experience itself and see what shows up there. Got a piece that's not calm now? Very much better. Yeah. So that's cool. Let's celebrate that and then not stop. So what I what I make this as an example of is like when you start this process, it's like um, you've got a room full of furniture and you do this and you throw the big pieces of furniture out the door. You got them taken care of. So you could stop and say, oh, it's very very much better, right? But then it's like, okay, let's just start clean looking for dust in the corner. You know, like, what else is there that's not completely calm? Because that can do two things. Either it can, like, just finish it off and make it completely calm, or it's like, that one actually has a really big charge on it that I didn't know. It's like it opens up a room to a whole other piece that you could consolidate. Now, you were talking about you were doing some past relationship pieces, and it's possible that you started with one, Got a long ways on that, and all of, a, all of a sudden you may have realized the connection to the other one. That can happen sometimes. So you think, oh, that's not a big deal. I got this all taken care of. And then you find this piece, and it's like, oh, I got a whole new thing to pay attention to. You use exactly the same process, and you reconsolidate that memory as well. Okay? So it's very much better. Now, before we move on with that, well, I'm going to ask you, go ahead and identify. Great, it's much better. Start looking now for the pieces that are calm. Okay? And they could be this exact same situation, or it's like, gosh, this reminds me so much of the situation I got in 15 years ago over this. Okay? You start looking consciously. Why? Because it works. Things from 15 years ago could be impacting the way that you deal, approach this situation based on other experiences. And if that shows up, if it doesn't show up, it's fine. But if it does, it's like, no, oh, I can reconsolidate that too. You know, just like you worked with issues from years previously. So for the you others, check your issue that you came up with. See if it's same or different. Does it feel same or different for you? It feels different, okay? Like I'm not afraid of this emotion. I'm not afraid of okay. I feel more calm. So it was an emotion of fear that was there. So <clears throat> the, um, more anger. Now you're feeling anger. You know, that's what it was. What it was. was. So it was more anger. Okay. So anger. Was, go ahead. A little bit of anger and fear. Okay. Well, and now as you check in with that, it makes you more peaceful, more uh, okay. understanding. All right. And that's great. You're actually bringing the chemistry of calm into a past situation, such that it's not going to show up in the same way with the same anger and the same fear. It's actually it's remarkable. It's miraculous. It's wonderful, and it's totally predictable. That's what I really like about it. It's not because I'm really good at this. Well, I think I'm good at this. It's because a mechanical process, a chemical process, is happening in our brain and we understand it. And you got it just from reading the book. You know, it wasn't like I was here doing some magic on you. You opened the book, you read it, you understood it, you did the process. You didn't even like really worry about the science piece of it. It's just like, I'm doing this process and it works. Okay? So 
you have a predictable process or if another piece shows up around this, it's not common. And so I invite you now to you check in and identify whatever's there that's not common. Either more on this one or another issue. How about for you? Well, it wasn't a huge issue, but I, it was sadness, but it was just about, you know, feeling like I wasn't invited to something. Okay. And trying to figure out if that's connected with other sadnesses with feeling left out or uninvited. So. Okay, so sadness about not being a participant in something. Yeah. Now, as you check on that now, and you check back on it, same or different? It's different. Okay. So go ahead and keep exploring that. If there's yeah. something else you can find, take it for the next round. If you can, take something else. Okay. Eventually, I don't know how many lifetimes down the road, everything's <laughs> reconsolidated, but who knows. <laughs> so for you, if you check back on whatever you identify, it's considerably better, considerably better. Okay. okay. There's still some. I mean, I took a second issue when we okay. did the second round. And the second issue, I don't think it's completely solved. Got it. So it feels like it's considerably better, a different issue, but not completely resolved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what there is to do, okay, and these are just the three things to check for. What's the experience that shows up now? Okay. It may be the same. Or it may actually be a different piece of it that shows up. Okay, such as um, sometimes I use the example of a car accident because, like, the first thing that could show up is I looked in the rearview mirror and I saw this car coming at me. Okay, and that could be the only thing you remember about that accident. When you reconsolidate that, what may show up is, my gosh, I was laying outside the car and these people who were the attendants, you know. Um, I, I felt like, you know, it was going to die or something, you know, okay? Two different things. The first one might show up, and the only thing that shows up, because that's the one that's in your face. When that's reconsolidated, then another aspect of a memory could show up, okay? And then you would pay attention to that, because it would have its own emotion and its own uh, neurons and connections in the brain and you would reconsolidate that. So one event can have many pieces. That's why I was kind of making that crack about the yellow shirt earlier. You know, it wasn't all just for fun. It's like a different piece can show up. Sometimes the sound of a person's voice can store differently than um, another part of an incident. And so you just take whatever comes up. No judgment ever in the process. And you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I really shouldn't feel angry about that person. Well, great, except for I do. <laughs> and so if I don't acknowledge it, it's like, oh no, no, no. You know, then there's then I can't reconcile it here, right? I need to I need to feel it. It's when you activate that memory that you have those four hours to work with it. So just let go of the self-judgments. And just acknowledge what shows up, and then you can reconsolidate it. But if it's like, oh, I really shouldn't feel this way, well, then you're not letting yourself actually experience that emotion. Okay? So in this issue, you said it feels much better. Um, I'm just saying those things as information. I have no idea what you're intending to. Go ahead and just check now for what's showing up now. See if the emotion is different. See if a piece of the experience is different. See if it changes where you feel it in your body. It's not, it's still here. Okay. But here was feeling really good. And as I check back, the discomfort in my chest is coming back. Okay, great. That, and I say great um, because this is what I do all the time. It's like, good, there's something for us to use this process of. Okay? So, I always want it to happen in a way that people don't get overwhelmed. Um, and there's a simple way to help people from getting overwhelmed if it becomes a really charged issue. I'll um, go into that later. But for me, whenever I'm working with someone, the more things that show up, it's the more things are going to be calm. So pay attention now to this and see what emotion shows up for you. Maybe same, maybe different. Still fear. And is it around a certain experience? 
Mm-hmm. And it's around a certain experience. And it's just a different aspect of the experience. Excellent. That is more here. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, I only mean excellent in terms of the process. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you just identified an emotion, a location in the body, and a new aspect of an experience. Okay. So for you, if you pay attention now just to what's showing up for you, so it's much better. Pay attention to what's showing up. Do you have something again? Um. Okay. It's possible it could turn out to be completely caught. And well, it's easier to look at it and when I identify the emotion, I don't I don't feel the same degree of emotion. Yeah. Even when I do the other emotion. You start to go for the little things in the corner. Yeah. Okay. And it could happen that at the conclusion of this evening you're completely calm about it. And I won't ask you, but if I were to ask you to tell it to me, you could tell me the whole thing like a movie, mm-hmm. completely calm from front to back. Then you know, for now, you're good with this. The only things you're going to reconsolidate are the things that come up during this time. Tomorrow, you could be in the presence of that situation again, and new things would, you would be reminded of aspects that didn't come up tonight. Well then, all there is to do is to do the processing. It's not that this didn't work. This works for whatever's coming up now. But if you felt an upset later, then there's something else. Just like right now, there's a different piece. It would mean that, oh, I didn't do some piece that other than that. Something new showed up. I'll do that. It may feel like the same thing. It's the same basic situation. But you've actually reconsolidated things for good around the things that you've changed chemistry. Okay? So we all have something. Check, um, let's see, so you've got that check. Do you feel this in your body? It's more subtle now. But can you still identify the same or different location? Um, I think it's... Okay. And is the emotion... Different. Different. Before it was here and that's different. Okay, interesting. Okay. So I think that literally these emotional peptides store in our bodies. and can store there for years. So like heartache can be a literal chemical thing. Okay. But anyway. And that's out of Candace Burt's molecule of emotion. Uh, a real stellar researcher on the, on the chemistry of, um, of peptides. Um, so she's a good resource if you really want to look into that. Um, and then emotion. Still feel like disappointment now or is it a different piece showing up? You know, the word that I comes to my mind is disgust. Great. So you take it without judgment. That's what came to your mind. I guess I'm not sure where that came from. It doesn't matter. You see, if we think it, it's like, oh, I never feel disgusted about people. You know, there's <laughs> always a reason for what they do. What are we doing? We're rationalizing it, right? That's a different part of our brain from the emotional content. And what, you know, we can rationalize all we want, which is what you've been doing, and most of us do about our situation. But where did it get you? It didn't, you know, it got you a way to survive the situation, but it didn't get you away from these stored emotions. They're still there. The more I think about that emotion, the more I think, well, I'll just tell you this is something to do with one of my children. Okay. And so there's so much emotion yep. there. Okay. And there's so many emotions that you don't want to feel that I don't want to feel about. It is such a perfect example. Okay. And I, I just invite all of us to like really get this. It's like I should feel this way. It's socially unacceptable to feel this way. I would never tell anybody that I felt this way about this person. 
the person I am. Is Absolutely, it? yeah. It's not who I am. I am not that person, okay? <laughs> In which case then, what we're doing is we're building mental real estate that allows us to act in a certain way, even though what happened, you know, with the emotion is it got stored as disgust, you're saying, yeah, okay? Which is actually seems stronger than disappointment or betrayal. It's showing up as layers now, okay? Yeah. All right? So you can keep playing the I'm going to figure this game out and be the right person, which is what most of us do all of our lives, but if we only knew that if I just withhold judgment for a little while, no judgment, good, bad, or otherwise, I just allow myself to pay attention and feel what's here. Just feel it. If you feel it for half an hour and start to work on it, this process won't work. Because you will actually start to build new pathways in your brain around it. It works when you identify it for a couple of minutes. So most of this research is on laboratory rats, okay? So they, <laughs> so you're, you're very good mice tonight. We're very good mice. But what they would do is they would teach a, a mouse a fear response, okay? So they would get them to go on this little place and they would give them a little shock. So they would be scared when they go there, okay? The next day they would bring them back and they would they would reactivate it, the memory. So they create a memory, right, when they're up there. So they don't want to go back to that place where they get shot, correct? They're trained that when they go to this place, they're going to get shot. They go away. Now, then they got two groups of rats, okay? So they start to train this one. Well, actually, they did it with, with chemicals. There's these chemicals you can put in your brain to interrupt the formation of memories. It's called propanolol. So the rats that they didn't, um, go back and activate the memory. They would go back and shock them. Okay. They would give them the the medicine, and nothing happened. But if yeah, they took the rat back the next day and they shocked them for a moment, okay, what happened? That's just like the shock of going back to the memory for you and you and you. And you. Okay? It's the same thing. You reactivated the memory. Could be from 20 years ago. Could be from the day before. You got a little foot shock from your rat. Okay, same difference. So they they shock the rat. Now that memory is active in their brain from when they learned that every time they're on this platform they get shocked. They inject that one with the medicine. Then a day later they test it. Well, the mouse that got a shock right before they were given the calm space medicine, they went right up on that thing because they weren't afraid of it anymore. The memory had been disrupted. It had stored differently. It no longer stored with a fear peptide. It was because they had gone up and they had reactivated that memory for the little mouse. The mouse that learned to fear, and then they took them over here and gave them Cheerios and whatever, and they gave them the, the forgetful medicine. Took them back the day later. They were afraid of that sleep. You get it? Okay. So it's a really, it's what's happening here. Okay? So I'm asking you to activate your memory. So all of us, some point, about around this memory, we had the original experience. We went in the little thing and they shot your foot. Okay? That's everything you identified. Okay? From a long time ago or whenever. Okay? Now, half of you, then we go back, we go away from it. Now, half of you, I'm going to just um, send over to your house to play a game, okay? And then the other half, I'm going to say, I want you to pay attention to that memory. I just want you to pay attention to that, okay? Now, bring you back together. And you that just paid attention to the memory, if you go to the calm space and then go back and pay attention to your memory, you will reconsolidate. It will become calm. If I brought you in from outside and you had not gone back and paid attention to your memory, but then you went out here, so you didn't even pay attention to the old memory, okay? 
Got it? So never came up the issue. Oh, let's go to the calm space. And then I invite you to go back and pay attention to it. It was never activated. When you activate that memory for four hours, you can go in and replace it with calm. I sent those people away and they never reactivated the memory, the old memory. They just came back for the calm and the exchange. Doesn't doesn't calm down. This isn't making sense to you. Yeah, yeah. You get I, it? I get it. it is now, but it was a little bit um, yeah. sketchy there. Okay. And the deal with the rats and the kind of all so so what, yeah, we don't really need to do it, but it, it's based on simple experiments with animals and the way the brain synapses work. Okay. Yeah, I just get excited about talking about it. Because like, oh. he's a scientist. Well, well, that, was what, I, that was what helped I'm me to understand what we were doing with yeah. uh, a research type fellowship okay. at the University of Texas. So I really am tapped into yeah. how did you conduct this study with the rats. You know? yeah. And so I'm trying to understand how that injecting the medicine in the rats correlates with the calm space. That's what I'm trying to. So about. this is the that medicine, the propanol, is a memory blocker. So are you creating the calm space, or are you keeping them from the calm space with the medicine? The critical thing is that half of the group. They they all learn a fear response, just like you all have. Right. All the rats okay. got the shock. They all they all learn a fear response. Right. Then they everyone gets the, the medicine. Okay. Everyone gets Everybody gets the medicine. Okay. But for half of them, they are not reminded of the event before they get the medicine. Oh. Because okay. they are not reminded of it, because the memory doesn't become active in their brain uh -huh. before they do the calm space process. It's not activated. It's still basically a stuck memory, and so it doesn't reconsolidate. Really okay, so with the rats, you shock the rats. All of them. All of them. You take them all and give them the, call, the, the forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. Then, what's the next step? Before, so half, they all get it, okay? They all get it. This half, they don't remember it. This half, before, just before they got it, they were brought back. To look at that thing that made them fearful. So just before you went out to the calm space, yeah. I asked you, I asked you to pay attention to right. what is it that made you fearful. Right. And then I gave you the medicine. And then you reconsolidated it. Okay, so well, half, half the rats half. didn't see the platform. The other half got to see the platform that was wow, shocking. Yes. Before. Right. Before. Okay. So had had I brought you all in here. And just asked you to please look at this calm space. Right. It would have been wonderful to move into a state of rest and restoration for our bodies, but we would have done nothing for reconsolidating these old memories. So the rats that weren't reminded of the were still afraid. That is correct. But the ones that were reminded of it were not. That is correct. Okay. That was the discovery. Yeah. Okay, because what they knew before that was that whenever you have an experience in your brain, it actually takes a significant amount of time, weeks, even years, for a memory to fully consolidate. And then they thought it's permanent forever. And this guy said, I just wonder. And he actually brought him back, had him pay attention to an old memory, and it turns out it then has to go through the process of cementing again. So when you bring it up, the issues that you're working on, they have to cement again the memories to store in the same way. If we interrupt that storage by going to the calm space and then paying attention to it, we actually interrupt the storage so the thing that you were angry and afraid about, you feel emotionally different about it. It's amazing. It is amazing, but the one thing I think as I've worked with you more than one time, is that the important part about this is that sometimes you don't want to go there, the emotion. And without going through that emotion, I, it didn't reconsolidate. Correct. It's feeling it. And so to intellectualize and say, okay, this is what I have, 
I mean, that's why it's so important the the memory, the physical and the emotion. Because if you don't if you don't feel the emotion that is tied to it, then it doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. This is not a this is not a cognitive thinking process. So you can't. And it was hard when I had some of the hardest ones. It, it's hard. So you would say, oh, I don't feel anything. I don't feel anything. Because I didn't feel anger. I had blocked anger. Totally. I don't know what anger is because I don't have it. So I would just say, I don't feel anything. It would take a long, long time for me to feel the anger. Well, I couldn't even validate any of my anger because I didn't feel like I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just yeah. for the recording here, just what you're saying is, the importance of paying attention to the emotions yeah. and that sometimes we don't want to and, and certainly when I work for myself on things I'm much slower at recognizing them for myself than I am when I work with someone else it's just the nature of who we are we have set up an automatic system for how we function and so when we pay attention to ourselves we're often slower about being aware of what's going on okay and that's part of why it's like I, I try to have a, a, a very simple but concrete process. Because it's like, okay, what really is my emotion here? And anger, fear, sadness, in their simplicity, capture most of it. You know, a feeling of disgust is some, it's, it's a finer tuning of the emotion of anger. You know, that's disgusting to me. I'm angry. Because I'm angry about it, that may be disgusting. You know, and, and so it's fine to use other emotions, but for me, it's like when I do it for myself, it's an anger, fear, sadness. Because it is sometimes very tricky to get that sense for myself. It's subconscious stuff that I run out of, and it's like our subconscious wants to stay hidden because it's the autopilot. It's not the it's not the thinking thing, you know. And then and then the thing about paying attention to where you feel in the body and making a connection. Is very powerful. They're just like, what? What's the issue here? You know, and there's times, often, when something will show up. It's like, oh my gosh, that pattern is all the way back from childhood. And I have some some uh, childhood patterns that keep showing up, but they actually show up in slightly different ways each time. It's not that the process isn't working. It's that some other thing triggered some other piece of it. We all have very extensive childhoods. We built a lot of brain real estate in our childhoods about how we do things. Okay. Okay. So we got off on that kind of track because you were saying, "I don't. I shouldn't even feel this emotion. That's a cognitive thing. I shouldn't feel it." Put that aside for a moment, please, and just say, "I feel that. No judgment. Now." Observe a point. We all have the things that we activated. So observe a point. And in that observation of that point, you are developing a conscious space. Between yourself and the issue that you identify. It's a really simple thing to do, but it's not like our first response. You know, we were never taught this as kids, like, oh, you feel upset? Go look at a point. Go find the edge of a curtain rod. <laughs> so it takes something to remember to use this process when you realize that you're not home. But if you learn to do it like you are, well, then it becomes more and more of a natural choice. Observe the second point. And when you observe that again, you're developing a space, an emotional space between yourself and the emotional yourself in this exact moment and the emotional self that you identified a moment ago. You now observe the space that's in between that has nothing in it. And when you observe that space, it has nothing in it. You're observing that there's nothing in the outside world that needs your attention right now. There's nothing that your body needs to do to protect you 
in that fear or to fight that anger. And when you observe a space, there's nothing in it. Your body gets a signal, there's nothing it needs to do, and it moves back into rest and restoration mode. Moves it out of the fight or flight response into rest and restoration mode. The chemistry of your entire body, all 50 trillion cells of your entire body, changes in this instant. Over a thousand different chemical reactions change. It's an enormously healthful position to live your life from. And now we're going to use this chemistry in this amazing piece of memory reconsolidation to observe that on the exact issue that you identified with. So I invite you to go ahead and do that and check for what's there. Check the location in your body. See if it feels the same or different. Check for that emotion of anger, fear, sadness, disgust, whatever it was you identified. See if it feels the same. Or see if you have a different difference to it. And then check the issue itself. Well, whatever it was that showed up, whatever aspect of it was that showed up, pay attention to that. And when you pay attention to that, see what's there in your mind. So you had said that you still felt something that was actually rising back up in your chest. There was a different piece of it that was showing. What's your experience as you check back in? There's still a little bit of a, but not like it was before, and it's not, and some of it may be just from listening to you while I'm doing it. I'm used to having quiet, but I do sure. it. Oh, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, you know, and when you were talking before, all these things went through my mind. Mm -hmm. that, they weren't calm. Well, no, they weren't uncalm. They were more, um, Science stuff, I guess. Yeah. In my head, you know, um, that I wasn't in that space mm -hmm. when we did the second round. Yeah. And I was in that space when we did it this time. And I think, you know, um, it, it took away from the experience. So. Yeah. And you know, when I when I do a session with people, I'm partly sharing information to try to give a person a framework that they can take home with them. So it's like, oh, this makes sense, and I'll use it. Because it's so easy to get home, be back in the same um, stress and energy of stuff, and it's like, well, I'm stressed, and I can't look at a point. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? You know, It just doesn't occur, because our normal experience isn't to step into that. So I always try to make a mix of, of those pieces, and if it's distracting, that's a good point. You should pay attention to that. So now, as you pay attention to this, since there's still something there, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes something shows up, and it's like it actually connects to something else. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, this situation or this person, I'm feeling this, but it's like, oh, that happens with that person too. You see how, like, the layers can come up? And, and they, so you just take whatever shows up. You know, rummage around a little bit and see. You're not making things up. What you're aware of is, oh, I've got more peptides I can reconsolidate. I've got some peptides active in my body that are calm right now. Can you just be aware of that? Check for an emotion, anger, fear, sadness. Check for an experience or a memory. Okay, so go ahead and play with that a little bit and just see what shows up. For yourself, the emotion that you weren't supposed to pay attention to? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've checked my emotions around it uh, by imagining um, sharing what it is that's mm -hmm. bothering me. And, and like you say, could I talk about it like it was, you know, I was detached enough. And uh, <laughs> so now I'm thinking, you know, the reason why I am so worried about it is because I need to um, confront my son about it and I feel more comfortable about that. 
Okay, so so now like I'm listening from the outside, okay? Right. So what I just heard was I have to confront myself. Mm -hmm. So there's probably some emotion around confronting another person. There's also a life experience that each of us has about confrontation that can go back to parents, um, workers, bosses, whatever. When you confront your child, you will be bringing in, just naturally, okay? There's no, again, no judgment, no blame in this. It's just what, who we are as humans. The way that an individual, the way that you have experienced confrontation will be present in this confrontation. And I even kind of realize now that I'm talking about it, that maybe I don't really even need to confront. Okay. So which frees me. Yeah. Yeah. Frees me to feel whatever I want to about it and not have to deal with it. Which is like going to an empty space where you don't have to react to it. Yeah. And it it's not a it's not a um it's not a denial of the situation. It's actually a freedom in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, it would really make sense that if you've reconsolidated an emotion of disgust that you weren't allowed to have, that you would feel a much greater sense of freedom. Because otherwise, there's something that needs to be made right in the world. And you're going to do that even though it's around an emotion that you're not able to express. Those things get very complicated. They tie up a lot of peptides. <laughs> <laughs> when we reconsolidate and we become free. It really is a feeling of freedom. Now, does it mean that there's not anything else? It doesn't mean that. There might not be anything else. But you may go home from this or tomorrow or whatever, and something shows up that makes this rise up in such a way that you feel not calm about it. Doesn't mean that what you reconsolidated slipped away. Just means something else showed up. Just like tonight you had three different rounds with this with different things showing up. Maybe there are more rounds. You know, like your experience, more rounds. Nothing wrong with that. It's actually great. If you go home and you play with, okay, confrontation. You know, just like, am I calm about confrontation, or is there an issue around confrontation? And then, then you just simply pay attention to whatever shows up. You can play this game. One, what's checking here in the room? Say a little bit. Go ahead. For you, did you have another one? You good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So. My question to you is, why would you live your life from any place other than the calm space? Notice that when you were in the calm space, you could still hear me talking to you. You could still take in information and you could still respond. Why would you live from any other place than that place? I acknowledge that almost all of us do live from places other than that, but why would we? Do you really want an answer or is that a rhetorical question? It's both. Do you, do you have a thought about it? <laughs> well, it's kind of like people who go on lithium or something, you know? <laughs> See, this is a, this is a, a, a real calm space. Uh -huh. They don't have passion. You know, there's passion and sadness and anger and fear, you know? So now you don't have the passion. <laughs> now you don't have the passion around this issue I'm with your child. It's <laughs> no, it's space is not with you. It's not with you. <laughs> the calm space is something that I can put in the pocket of my mind and take with me. Huh. It's just where it runs down. If I don't recharge it, then I'm not living in the calm space anymore. And then, you know, when I get miserable enough, I'll stop and go back to the calm space. I'll do good stuff. But, you know, until I get miserable enough to say, oh gosh, I better do it, 
I just don't stop. I keep going with what I'm going on. Well, why do you think, so you you were saying, oh, well, then if, if I'm calm, I don't have all the passion of life, okay, and then saying you're the devil's advocate, but it's actually really, really great to play with, and what you're saying is that I use this all the time, but I'll get going, and then I'll start to get not calm, and I'll just keep going down that route until I end up miserable enough, and it's like, oh, I better go and do this again, okay, so. I got a third one. <laughs> and the third one. And then I've used it so much. I mean, I've been using it quite often since, since it's often in my in my um, experience. And rather than being like lithium that dulls the light, calm space enhances and makes things clearer, makes me see clearer, think clearer, uh, feel more deeply. There's a clarity to the calm space. When you're in the calm space, life is real and right here. When you take lithium, I haven't <laughs> taken lithium, but I have taken antidepressants. Oh. It's a dullness. There's an edge right. taken off. And the calm space is anything but that. It's a clarity, not a, not a dullness. So you're having an experience yeah. with calm space that provides clarity for you. And and calmness, but also a clarity and an ability to be more present and engaged, actually. Yeah, it's more okay. present and yeah. living life fully, mm -hmm. not okay. with the emanated. <laughs> <laughs> so I think these are really valuable things. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Okay. So I think these are just really valuable, and I invite you to really listen carefully to everything that's been said. Because I now live out of that space. When I discovered this space, I had already been doing EFT for a while with other people and being amazed that their lives were changing. And then when I discovered this, it was like, that's it. This, it, the ice method, memory reconsolidation, is why these things are transforming for people permanently that have even been bothering them for decades. That's stunning to think that things that have been bothering us for decades all of a sudden, in a session or two, don't bother us anymore. Completely out of my understanding and experience of life prior to that time. So when this, when I became aware of this, it was like I just died in that pool. I just played with that, and it was, it was just. And then it, after two, three, four weeks, it was my habit. It doesn't mean I don't have times when I'm not calm. They come up plenty frequently. Not nearly as frequently as they did before, but still often. And when they do come up, I do that. Because I've done that enough that it's like, I can do this. The only time that this would not apply is if there's a literal fight or flight situation present. A real tiger or a bus is coming down the road and going to run us over or something. You won't even think about doing this. You, your fight or flight response will trigger as it's supposed to. You will jump out of the way of that bus to the best of your ability. That's what the fight or flight response is made for. We just use it for everything else. Like you say, oh, I gotta have this passion and stuff. What is that? That's the fight or flight response triggered around the issue that you are paying attention to today. So around that issue, you have all 50 trillion cells of your body basically pumped up for the boxing match. And that is not good for your long-term health. That's just information. That is not good for long-term health. It puts the body in a mode of not caring about long-term survival. Only about this present moment. Your digestion is not as good. Your skin temperature is different. Your heart rate and your heart pressure are different. Your eyesight, your eye focus changes. So many changes in the body happen when we're in fight or flight mode. Back in hunting gathering days, we would be in fight or flight mode when the tiger was chasing us. And the rest of the time, we, we wouldn't, if so the theory goes. But we now have so many things that are, we, we believe are tigers chasing us. You know, overdue bills, or uh, relationship issues, or politics, or climate change, or all of these things that we we stress about physically, in the same way, 
as if they were really a tiger that was chasing us. The body doesn't distinguish. You know, if the mind says that that's a threat, and really it's just an overdue notice for a library book, we treat it as if it was a tiger. But you say, oh, I keep going until I feel so bad I have to use it again. Why? Well, I never got caught the difference between an overdue library notice and a tiger in terms of bodily response. You know, it was like, oh, you got an overdue, you should be stressed about that. You got an exam tomorrow as a, in high school, you should be stressed about that. Yeah. Well, I was bodily treating it the same way as a tiger. Now I know the difference. And I'm not going back. And I'm pretty sure I can say that truthfully because it's been a couple years now with this process. And it just gets better. But there's a, there is a, a learning time in which you're involved in that now, in which you begin to realize that, wow, um, I don't have to do that same old response all the time. I can come back to this space. And not only that, but if there's an issue that's upsetting, I can actually remove its emotional impact from my history. As you said you did with previous relationships. But that's remarkable. Because until those are removed or calmed, I continue to see the world as a response to my mom and dad, just like you do. There's certain things that were, you know, um, safe spaces as a kid, and certain things that would put you in a very stressed and anxious place as a kid. We all learn things to do and not do, things to be and not be as kids, and we choose differently as adults, but those peptides are still stored. Now you can reconsolidate those. You can have freedom and calm around things, as you said, you know, with um, the previous <clears throat> people in your life, you can be completely calm around those. It's remarkable. It's a remarkable, remarkable freedom that's accessible through this very simple process because we now understand how the emotional component of memories is stored in our brains and our bodies. And we have a simple process for engaging that. You know, this isn't a, a six-week live-in process that you have to go through the world. It's just the choice that when something shows up that's not calm, I'm going to use this process. And that's the trick. Is to learn it. For some reason, you are ready. You know, and I don't know why people are ready and not ready. I'll work with other people, and they have an amazing experience. We remove them with fibromyalgia pain. And then head out, and they're back in pain, and stress, and what did you ice again? No. <laughs> no blame, no judgment. It's just it didn't make sense for that person at that time, even though they had this amazing experience. And I always thought when I started that, wow, you had this experience of zero pain and you've had pain for all these years, you would do anything in the world to not have it. And, and I think it's just that it's so different that we can actually live not in this constant fight or flight mode, but um, we're so used to that. You know, I have patterns and habits that I'm so used to doing even if I see a different way, I still do the same pattern. I, I guess I'm saying that, no judgment about it. It's just pay attention if this really, if you felt something different. That you feel freedom around an issue that you didn't feel free about. In fact, in the beginning, it wasn't like it was PTSD, but you said, yeah, I have a lot of emotion around this issue. And there are layers and layers and layers. And now you feel at least significantly more free. Yeah, that's, I feel like I don't really need to do anything about it. That's enormously huge. Yeah. Think about being able to do that to a dozen issues in your life and having all of that space that no longer impacts on what I need to do or have to do. And think about this as really an unending process all the way back through childhood that you can gain free space. 
for your life. I think I think the other thing that did get to hear when I first did it with you, I, I was overwhelmed by thinking that. There's so many mm. things to do that I could never do them all. It's right. Overwhelming. But the really interesting thing is that it's like the borrowing benefits thing you talked about with EFT, that when you do it, it um, that calm space grows and goes into other things without having to do with the issue. The space is in for instance, the idea of doing conflict with somebody, right? If you if if you paid attention to that, certain things showed up, and you reconsolidated those, well, then that wouldn't be that wouldn't be something that would be charging another encounter in the future that might have a uh, something that previously would have been considered a conflict, and now was just a exchange of information. So yeah. And at least from my personal experience, and those that, that I know that have really engaged this, um, it becomes very fun and exciting. Because rather than life just going this way and me needing to react to it, it's, wow, I actually have a very simple little process that will completely engaged in having control over this becoming peaceful, a peaceful part of my life. How much attention do we put on it? Like, I just want to be peaceful. You know, love to have some peace around this. Love, and here it is, a tool to bring peace into anything in our life that's not a physical tiger that's going to bite our neck off. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah. I think maybe the reason why it doesn't work for some people is because even though you say, if you were having all this pain, you wouldn't you do anything to have it go away? But there's different kinds of people. There's people that want to do something, and there's people that want someone else to do it to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this would work for somebody who wants to take responsibility, mm -hmm. but somebody who's looking for a different kind of solution. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is it's quite mysterious to me, this whole thing. Uh, and, and part of that is probably just because of the way that I approach things. Like, it's like, oh, I just, I dived into that pool and said, we saw that. And others, it just takes a little longer, toe in the water for a while, and others, it's not the right pool for us. So, it's all fine. Yeah. yeah. So, I have another thought. But it slithered away. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you were talking, I thought, I think I read something about that. <laughs> and then I realized I've read more of your book than I oh, okay. can pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, oh, I know what I wanted to share, maybe just kind of a closer, but uh, if you really do play with this a lot, sometimes you can really help people in a real hurry. You know, like, we had this food stand last year, and somebody came up to get a glass of water, and I said, oh, are you thirsty? She says, no, I have a terrible migraine headache. I said, oh, is this going to happen? She said, I don't think so, but I just want to. I said, just look at this thing on our, um, on our um, canopy for a second. I said, look at that one over there. I said, oh, look at this one again. Now, see in between the spaces. Now, hey, how's your head right now? You know, she, I said, how bad does it hurt? Zero to ten. It's like a nine right now. It was seven. It's like that. Point again for a second, would you? Okay. Pay attention to your head. And her headache went down to like a one or a two. Wow. In the space of, I don't know if you remember when that happened. Yeah, it was three or four minutes. Yeah, it was a couple of minutes, literally giving her the water. There wasn't any more lines. So I've had that happen really a number of times. and. You've noticed, like with children, you know, if they're playing with a bunch of other kids, they can run head first into a tree and they don't even notice it. They're still playing and everything. And then you take them home late at night and they're tired and you touch them in the wrong way and they just explode. Peptides. 
they've got these peptides going when they're out running. They're just full of charge and excitement, and they don't feel pain in the same way. Then they're all tired, and they make up pain when there's no pain. So sometimes with a kid, you know, if they if they skin their arm or something, they say, you know, oh, look at that. And then this other little kid, I said, look at that finger. Does it hurt as much on that finger as that finger? It was back and forth, because what are you doing? When you're focused on the cot, you're paying attention to the cot, your consciousness on the cot, your consciousness on, on those cells, your consciousness is on that pain. Does it hurt as much as that finger as there? No, that doesn't hurt. Well, check that with that. And you just get a kid's mind moving different places. We had a little kid over at our house who got burned. And he put his hand on us. So it was just very interesting how the pain went down a lot just by playing the game. So consciousness, where we put our mind, has a lot to do with our experience of our physical body. So tonight is a process of, of doing this in a very, just a very simple way. It's not the only way to have this happen. But the reason I use ICE, Identify, Calm, and Exchange, is because in my understanding it matches the actual process of reconsolidating memory in our brain such that it no longer bothers us. So, so anyway. that's what I got. Questions, comments, thoughts? Want to do it again next week? You good? I'm going to do these until people don't show up anymore. I'm going to stop, <laughs> stop doing it for a while. But people keep coming and keep doing it for a while. <laughs> so, um, how, how does that work for you, given like you've been doing this on your own? What's it like to come do it with some other people and have it be guided? Well, I, I think that the, uh, I've picked up some pointers about doing it, that, that you know, just some fine tuning of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I had a habit of, of uh, not always taking the time of the two points on the outside and going right to the void. If you can get there, that's spot. fine. You know, and, and I'll do that. I'll just mm -hmm. go to the calm space or the calm spot. Yeah. Without doing that, you know, without doing that. Um, and so that, you know, I don't know whether, I guess I'll try it both ways and see, you know. It's, that's fine. What I find for myself is if something agitates me a lot, I do use the two points. Because you, if you're agitated a lot, you can consider you're pretty ramped up at a pretty high voltage. When you look at a point, you're still looking at something that's real in the world, right? Yeah. And so it's like it's ramping the voltage down, one second point, and then you can observe the thing that has no voltage on it. So you know, don't forget it for when you need it, but if you can go right to observing the comp space, that's awesome. And then just start asking yourself, how come I'm not in there right now? And then come back to it. And then carry on your day. You can do your taxes from the calm space. <coughs> you, know, you can be in arguments with people from the calm space. If they're not going to punch you, you actually don't need your body to have a physical response. Yeah, it's, it's, I do that. My daughter has... Uh, but the other day she was all upset about something. Her bank account was part of that target. You know? mm -hmm. And she just could not let that go. I mean, you know, she was like a dog in her mind. And she couldn't sleep. Or anything. Right, because the body is she just, active. And I just said to her, you know, do, do this thing, you know, and I told her about looking here and looking there and then finding the calm space in between. And she went home and went to sleep. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, you can do it quick and just like a band aid. And she really doesn't understand the depth of it or anything. She just did this. Yeah. 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 We've been talking about chemistry, okay? But the piece that this brings up is our consciousness creates our chemistry. She had a consciousness of, of um, credit card, target, this, 
and she had a reality in her physical body of credit cards are good this. <laughs> when her consciousness changed, you helped her to change it, just you helped her to make a choice to observe one point, two point space with nothing in it. Consciousness now is not on all the stuff out there, which can't hurt you anyway, but it's on nothing. When you observe nothing, then the body gets a signal, okay, God has got it covered, there's nothing to do. Nothing that the body needs to do now. You're telling the body, nothing the body needs to do. Tired goes to sleep. Simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People that don't have fibromyalgia typically don't sleep well. It's one of the issues. And when we start to do this together, people will typically report that they start sleeping much better. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, you know how you can get anxious about, I can't fall asleep again? Well, if you do this and you go back to a calm space, you're in a state of rest and restoration anyway. So it's fine to be awake. Because your body is in a rest state. So you're actually repairing, even though you're laying there awake. And in all likelihood, when you move in that state, like your daughter experienced, fall asleep. It's very nice. Yeah. I sleep more and better than I used to. Quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Than before I started using hypnosis. Amazing. So you didn't sleep until past 4.30. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I get up between 6 and 7. So that's, that's a big difference. It's usually more towards the 7. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. That's pretty weird. So that does happen, which yeah, you never, which never happened before. Yeah. Good. I really appreciate that you came because, um, one, it's wonderful to meet you and because you've been telling me how this has been working in your life. Um, but then also to just have this exchange, really, and to share experiences and learn from each other is really good. So thank you for that. And to the rest as well. As well, well I don't think I told you anything. <laughs> Maybe next time. So, but continuing to be good days for you using this? It's, it's good. But, uh, one problem, it's a self uh, problem that I have about myself, is I don't know if it's been my accident or just the way I am, but. Like when you start talking about the mice and all this, it's to a level where I don't know what you're talking about. But you, know, you guys have all these words that I felt that the little guy again in the university or the college kids, you know, just in the back, uh, sweeping the floor, and I don't know what anybody's talking about. Which makes me feel really bad about my life, and that's why I feel like a lot of people don't want to come see me or be with me because of that. I'm not. I'm not going to share with you in that way. I understand. So go ahead. <clears throat> we'll just do one more round. So, so I, what? I, I'm getting pretty good. Really well, we're going to do one more round because here's what you observed, okay? You observed this, there was a situation that you experienced, okay? Starting to talk about mice. Everybody else got confused too, as you saw. But you felt particularly, guys, this is very confusing. I don't get it. And then came up these other experiences that you just said, like back in the college classroom, sweeping. Don't understand. People won't come in. Going back to this feeling. Okay, so this is what you get to play as the game if you want to. As soon as you notice, wow, it wasn't just like I didn't understand, but now I don't feel calm about it. Now I feel kind of bad about this. Okay, then you just observe this. Okay, is it more like anger, or fear, or sadness that you feel? Sadness. Sadness. Okay. So you, you have this experience and brought back memories. All of that's active. You pay attention to the emotion and it's sadness and just notice where in your body do you feel it? Maybe no more, but if you do, we're just checking. No, not like heart or stomach or going to be pain in the chest. Sure, to my, my being. Okay, yeah. But there's a feeling, right? Okay. So what we can do just in this one round, I'll let you play with it more, okay? Is that the reason I wanted to do it is because there's certain stuff that's active right now. And so I want you to, whatever two points you use, find the first one. So we can all move into the calm space. 
to whatever point you want. Observe that point. Then observe the second point. And then observe with your conscious mind a space that has nothing in it. And as you do that, notice that you come back to a feeling of peacefulness. So if anything ever upsets you during the day, you can always just come back to this peacefulness feeling once you realize it's not really going to physically hurt you in this moment. And this is just such a great place to live your life from. And if you play this game, this will become your habit. And you'll want this to be where you live from. Okay? But what we're going to do for finishing up tonight is just we're going to use that in your life. So just go back and go ahead and observe back on the emotion of sadness. Just let yourself feel and pay attention to that emotion of sadness at exact point you felt before. You're bringing different chemistry into it. And check and see. It may feel the same, it may feel different. So observe the memory. Now I should really laugh. <laughs> well, so now observe that scene of feeling like I'm in the back of the classroom sweeping in a college home. So observe that scene. See if it feels sad or see what it feels like. I'm just doing my job and smiling. All right. Anyway, I make that up. Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, it's an example. Yeah, and so go back to that example, because that example felt sad to you a moment ago. So you go back to it, now you yeah. feel like, oh, I'm there, I'm just doing my job. Yeah. Okay, observe, um, just, and you said, observe, uh, people don't want to come over to my house, because I feel like I don't get everything. Observe that feeling. That still have some sadness to it? Yeah. Okay. Now, so you, what you did was on a specific, particular thing that came up, talking about mice and drugs for mice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you ended up having a response, an emotional response. Okay, and then you just did some reconsolidation with it. That's a pretty cool thing. Okay. So it's like these silly little things, talking about mice, you know, they have all different... Now you got excited about that because you were thinking about your research on mice. You had a different reaction about it. There's no good or bad. We just have emotional responses to life. If we pay attention to the ones that aren't calm, we can reconsolidate them. That's pretty cool. Because it, it's, you know, we're talking about that same imaginary mouse, and we're all having a different response to it. And that's the way all of life is. We talk about one thing, you know, you take this situation with um, one of your children, and ten people have been involved in it, everybody has a different emotional entrance and experience of it, and idea about it. That's just the way it is. You get to have a calm space that holds this now, which allows you to be much more free with whatever is going on. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Yeah, I got to go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.